from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Morning, everybody. Welcome. This is a great day in this city. First of all, this enormous celebration of literature, and just across the mall, that brand new museum opening for African American history. I live here, so I'm warning you, don't try to go over there today. It will be so jammed and impenetrable, you'll never make it. But maybe tomorrow or the day after, that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, we need to thank some people before we start talking, Sharon and I. Uh, first of all, of course, the Library of Congress, David Rubenstein of the Carlisle Foundation, uh, Carlisle Group, he's co-chairman of this festival, and of course, all the volunteers, the people, organization, who have supported this festival over the years. There's some housekeeping we have to do. Cell phones, you know, I forgot to turn mine off. Turn <laughs> But I'm waiting for George Clooney to call, so <laughs> you'll understand, won't you, Sharon, oh, if yeah. we stop in the middle? Well. Good. Well. <laughs> you know how long I've been waiting for this? <laughs> and before that, it was Robert Redford. <laughs> anyway, cell phone's off, please. Uh, we'll have some questions at the end. Uh, there are microphones around, and you'll need to step up to them. And when you do, stand up straight, because they're going to be filming us. So it's for eternity, or anyway, the library's archives want to look good. Um, I think we're done. There'll be a book signing. Sharon will sign books uh, at 11.30, somewhere in this vast spectrum of chairs and tables. But let's get to the main event already. That's Sharon Robinson, and the name of her book, The Hero, Two Doors Down. Char Sharon's written a number of books for young readers. Uh, and she's created, this is so interesting to me, a baseball-themed curriculum yes. for young people, for really self-image, right? And no, ways it's, not, it's actually character development. Yeah, good morning. Thank you all for coming out. Um, really appreciate you being here. Yeah, uh, Breaking Barriers in Sports and Life, we're in our, our, our 20th year, and it's all about character education and helping kids understand that they, he told me this was going to go, my scarf is very fluid, and it's not doesn't do well with a mic. Can you can you hear me? You hear okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, it's, it teaches kids that obstacles or barriers are a part of life. We give them v values I associate with my dad's success on off the field as strategies, and ultimately they write an, an essay uh, for a contest where they talk about a barrier they've had to overcome and how they use the values. And we get about seventeen thousand essays from kids all over the country. Wow. And then I go out and visit them and uh, in their schools, and ultimately we bring the top winners to the All-Star Game and to the World Series. Oh, my gosh. 22 million children, young people. 20, actually, yes, it's actually we're up it's to 20. More. Isn't it amazing? It's yes. amazing, and it's quite an accomplishment. It's Congratulations. Uh, great work. Yeah. Um, you need to bear with me because I am a New Yorker. I'm also old, and I stopped following baseball when the Dodgers moved to Los Angeles. I was so. She's not a true fan. I was true. I was. <laughs> it broke my heart. That was the end of everything. But this book gives me back so oh, much of what the Dodgers meant and what what the city was like mm -hmm. when they had just arrived and what their future and the difficulties, especially for your father. Can you do just a really quick synopsis of the plot? That little boy, that yeah, it's, uh, young uh, man. The Hero Two Doors Down is a story, is Steve Satlow's story. Um, 1948 Brooklyn, uh, Flatbush area. My, Steve is a big Brooklyn Dodger fan and my parents moved two doors down. And so Steve has this you know, can't wait to meet Jackie, can't wait to meet Jackie, all these missed opportunities, finally meets him. But what's interesting is it's told through Steve's perspective, and what I've loved from my story, my letters that kids have written me, because Steve is not a perfect kid, he's like, little, gets in trouble quite a bit, and uh, so the kids kind of like that. And what became a Steve, and I said Steve became a surgeon, like he had planned on it, but uh, he did push his second grade teacher over a hedge <laughs> and she was trying to visit his parents. It's a true story. So Steve is alive and we're good friends and uh, you know he just couldn't help but share some of his very interesting childhood stories with me. It's an extraordinary story because yeah. he's a little Jewish kid 
Flatbush in those days, and maybe today still is, uh, was uh, primarily a Jewish neighborhood. So it interested me why your parents moved there. Well, it was uh, actually my a black woman purchased the home in the in neighborhood. Mm -hmm. My parents just rented uh, the the one of the flats from her. Yeah. Um, so it was just coincidence. It yeah. wasn't purposeful. And the my parents had never been around a Jewish families either, or the Jewish uh, culture or religion, and so there was some mishaps, particularly around Christmas and Hanukkah. I think that's the story that needs to be told. <laughs> Will you tell it? Oh, yes, okay. The, the Christmas tree. Well, yes, well, the first Christmas, Steve was over our house. Now, Steve and Jackie have become friends. And Steve is over at my parents' house helping my dad decorate the tree. And at his home, they were preparing for Hanukkah. And neither, neither family conveyed that they were preparing for different holidays. They were, one was on Saturday, and Christmas was on Saturday, and Hanukkah was on Sunday, first day of Hanukkah. So Steve just thinks, this is a very cool tree, and isn't it beautiful? And then he leaves, and my, while he's there, my, he asked, my father asked him, is your tree up yet? Steve said, well, we don't have one. And my father's going, well, why doesn't he have a tree? It's Christmas Eve, my father, after Steve leaves, literally went out and purchased a Christmas tree, brought it to Steve's home, meets Steve's mother for the first time, who's horrified, but she can't tell Jackie Robinson that she can't accept the tree. So, and then it got even funnier because my parents literally then showed up a little while later with the ornaments and lights and to help them decorate the tree. So, uh, so needless to say, our families be remained lifelong friends. Yeah, yeah. But, but I love this story, as you do, too, uh, just for all, what it reveals about the characters of, on both sides and why this friendship began when Steve was such a young boy and lasted yes. uh, into today, because it's a kind of caring and thoughtfulness, uh, a, a kind of elegance and generosity and smoothing things over and going on. And these were the lessons that Jackie Robinson brought to that little boy every, time, every time he saw. He was, you said he was a little bit naughty. I call it spunky. I don't know what they would call it today. Uh, but, teachers call it angry. Yeah, oh, OK, <laughs> angry. And, and he was picked on a lot, and there yeah. were bullies. But uh, your father helped him with that, too. He gave Very him some gorgeous. wonderful advice. Absolutely. Um, there's one particular scene in the book where Steve has gotten into a little trouble on the softball field and he tried to take on some of the older boys and he comes home uh, you know not wanting to tell his mother what had happened and he gotten into another fight and uh, then he sees Jackie and Jackie goes in the house and comes back out and now he's gotten the information from Steve's mother you know how the neighborhood works and so Jackie takes Steve for a little walk, and he says, Steve said, well, where are we going? And, and Jackie said, we're going to, I want to see your school. And Steve knows the boys are still there. So he's a little nervous, but on the way, he learns that he can tell Jackie, he can be honest about what happened, and you know, didn't have to take on, there's other ways to work through a conflict. But, but yes, and again, the, to me, the major lesson, and such a wonderful one was, don't get your back up especially you as a little kid, and especially with kids who are bigger, older than you, and tougher. But this is a man, imagine what he had to go through during his life, and to suppress the, the true anger and the real emotions that he must have felt. He tells the little boy, go up and say the right thing to them, or say something that reaches a hand out to them, rather than go in like this with your, with your dukes up. That and was... And you know what my dad learned very early on is that he, there are other ways you can release that anger. Mm -hmm. And so some of the great playing you saw on the field was his, you know, staying focused, hold, you know, yes, holding back that anger, but releasing it as he, you know, slammed the ball or, or stole a base. Um, in fact, my favorite kind of visual memory of my dad is when he knows he's got it and he's gonna, gonna, gonna steal home and there's just this great picture of him clapping his hands and jumping in the air and taking off and he steals home and it's like, I got this. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have many lessons for one another. Steve teaches your father something. They're in a city after all and there are brownstones and buildings with stoops and stuff and Steve is out there 
playing stoop ball. And Jackie Robinson says to him, what's that? Because why would he know, right? He didn't grow up in a place with stoops. A, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, it is a great, and you know, it's even funny, uh, Susan, I had, and all of you, you know, I, I, I read my reviews, and so I'm reading this review, and it's only a piece of the review, and I go, oh, I love it, it's a great review. And I go, oh, I've got to read the whole review. And I go to the whole review, and the, and the reviewer says, that stickball scene should have been three, uh, three pages. And I go, he's absolutely right. Uh, Why didn't we think of that? Uh, <laughs> so I take them very seriously. <laughs> These are the it loyalists. It reminds me to slow down, yeah. you know, yeah. do it right. Right. But, but Steve says later that he noticed how competitive your father oh, yeah. was. Yes. Learning, even learning this new sport, something he didn't know. Of course, he could do it in his sleep. But he saw that. Well, that was important for me to say because that was part of my father's character. Mm -hmm. So even at home, yes. if we were playing a family game of cards after dinner, I mean, my father, it's not like he held back. You know, we had to all compete. And you, know, you learn a lot of lessons from that. So, yes, competition was keen uh, in, in my dad's home life and in his professional life. So you wouldn't take on checkers or monopoly and he wouldn't let you just No, win. absolutely not. We Never. spent many a very long day playing Monopoly. Uh-huh. And no, he did not let us win. Yeah. Cuz that's not life. Yeah. In fact, when we started the Breaking Barriers program, kids people used to ask me, "Did my dad put the values up on the refrigerator?" And I go, "No. I learned them just by watching him and and he didn't he wasn't a preachy kind of guy. Um so you sort of look, just watch the behavior, whether it's the tough times in our lives or the, the joyous moments. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked so much how the two mothers became very good yes, friends. Yes, very good and, friends. And, and had a real affinity to one another. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Stephen's, uh, my mother, Rachel, who I had hoped to be here today, yeah, but she, uh, she wasn't able to make it. She's 94 now. It's an incredible 94-year-old. Um, and also, you know, I have to just say, um, you know, I'm a scholastic author. And our president of Scholastic, Ellie Berger, is here. And so thank you, Ellie, because it's, you know, it's like having, I have, I'm so lucky to have my Scholastic family, my baseball family, and my Robinson family. Wow, uh, yes, yes, you are. Great families, great connections. But you were uh, talking about playing games and all. Yes. He was away a lot. Yes. He was away a lot. And the family had to deal with that. And I love a passage. OK. Mind reading a little no. bit from your book? I marked it, but you can go on if you like. All right. Start with mom. Yeah. Mom said that her husband needed to take some romance lessons from Jackie. No, no, this start Steve's over mom. There. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, wait. She's sorry. She's leaving. I was out like, the oh, geez, stuff. did I write that? <laughs> the Dodgers left Brooklyn for a long stretch away, a stretch of away <coughs> games. I overheard Rachel tell mom that when Jackie was playing out of town, he wrote her long letters and sent flowers on Fridays. Mom said that her husband needed to take some romance lessons from Jackie. The two mothers laughed a long time over that one. I told my father about the conversation between mom and Rachel. Dad reminded me that since he worked in Manhattan, he didn't need to write his wife love letters. I had to agree. My father worked long hours, but he came home every night. I counted myself lucky. Yeah. That little boy is the narrator of the book. Yes. What was that like for you as a writer? Well, it was a, a, I thought it was going to be a very big challenge. Uh -huh. you know, I said, OK, now I'm an uh, eight-year-old Jewish boy from <laughs> 1948 Brooklyn. You know, but Steve, so I went to Steve. Yeah. And we just, we, we were still good friends. And we just spent time together. And then I would call him. i go, you know, I'm working on this scene. And he goes, oh, let me tell you something. Did I ever tell you this story? So his voice, he's just, that year was so important to him mm -hmm. that his voice comes, his eight-year-old, nine-year-old voice just comes out really strong. Uh. And so it helped me tell his story. So, I, of course, I immediately sent the manuscript to Steve and his wife, Izzy, yeah. and to Sarah. And Sarah is now 97. Um, and oh, that's his mother. Yeah, oh. yeah. Um, so they, they call me back, and they go, they loved it, so I, it made me feel wonderful. Yeah. It's, uh, it was it was a it was a great challenge, um, but it was also fun to do 1948 because when I first started this book, I thought, well, what happened in 
happened in 1948, you know? Everything. Dodgers didn't have a great year. I was trying to figure out what was I going to pull out of that. And then when you start doing your research, oh, and you see all these amazing things, women, women going back, going into the workforce, more into the workforce, um, you know, it just a change in Brooklyn. I mean, it was all very fascinating. But I came to the part about I wanted to do a mitzvah. I wanted my character to do a mitzvah. So a good I, deed. A good a, deed. A good so act. I was asking Steve. I love that she's speaking Yiddish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I asked Steve because you know Steve's very honest. Okay, Steve, did you learn? No. I said, wait. Well, in the book, you did. Your character did. <laughs> so 1948, I was like, okay, the Arab-Israeli war started. And I was like, okay, you've got to have that in there. And so it was, I had to find an organization that supported child, Arab and Israeli children. Huh? Turned out that 1948 was when UNICEF, UNICEF began. UNICEF. Oh, so it was all very fun to put yeah. them together. And then to, so there were creative parts, even though Steve told me um, many, many stories. Oh, yeah, but also not just creative, but lessons. You, yeah. uh, I love the way you move history in and out it, of this story about yeah. the little boy. Mm -hmm. And you uh, talk about civil rights, you move all of that in, you talk about New York education then, what all of what life was like then. Can I, may I read one oh, I'd love it. passage Please. that, I, that yeah. I like to read kids? I, when I work with kids on this book, I do a lot about voice, finding your voice, just for the same reason we just talked about how, how did I find Steve's voice mm -hmm. and, um, you know, and, and the importance of having a strong voice. So there's a scene that I, I like to read to them because right now, I mean, many of the issues that are in this book are contemporary issues as well. So um, it's, it's, at, it's before Steve and Jackie have met and become friends. And Steve's just sort of learning that this is going to be his neighbor. So it's, um, so his best friend's name is Cena. They've just, they're going out to play. An hour later, Cena and I, armed with sticks and a spalding ball, rode our bikes to the schoolyard. The, the courts were filled with other boys and girls. We joined a bunch of kids from our school and started up a game. It felt good to be outside playing with friends. We didn't mind the cold air. Actually, it felt good to run around in it. I, I proudly bat it with my toes pointed inward like my pigeon-toed hero, Jackie Robinson. I wasn't the best hitter, and I didn't run very fast, so the other kids held out little hope that I'd score. Still, I swung the wooden stick so hard that it grazed the ball and I got on base. The rest was easier. When I got a chance to run, I'd race around bases, mustering enough body warmth to keep me going. I was all heart. Afterwards, when we were riding our bikes home, Cena told me she had heard a black family planned on buying the two-family house at 5224 Tilden Avenue. Tilden. Big deal, I told her. My mom said only Jews should live in our neighborhood, Cena insisted. Why is that, I asked. Maybe so we can all go to the same temple, she suggested. Or so the neighborhood stays the way it already is. I slammed on the brakes and stared back at my friend in disbelief. I'm going home. What's the matter with you, Cena asked. The whole talk makes me mad, I yelled as I sped away. What about a quick game of, of stoop ball, Cena called. Not today, I yelled back at her. I didn't understand my sudden anger, but I knew it had to do with what my friend had said. All I could think of was how hard Jackie had fought his first season with the Dodgers just because his skin was black. Players and fans tried to make Jackie quit so they could keep baseball a white man's game. Jackie fought back with a well-timed base steal and a mighty swing. I reached home hot and frustrated. I stomped through the kitchen and grabbed a quick snack on my way to my room, trying to make sense of my feelings. I pulled out the tin can that held my most precious baseball cards. I separated them so the Dodger lineup was on top. Jackie was in the mix. Could Brooklyn win the World Series without him? Could they even get back there if he wasn't on the team, I wondered. That's terrific. That's terrific. It's so vivid. Uh oh, we better we better let them ask questions. Huh? We're down to ten minutes. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Prepare yourself. Thank you, Stand up keeper. straight. Thank you. Stand up straight and come on up to the microphone. <laughs> but I have more. Why did you write this book? Come on up. 
You know, I had told the book as a uh, part of the story, that little piece about the Christmas tree, yes. in a, a picture book. Um, and Scholastic wanted to do it as a middle grade reader. Uh -huh. And I thought, it, when I, what I learned in, in preparing that picture book was this story had a depth to it that would be fun to explore for older kids. That's uh -huh. why. I, that's why. Uh -huh. But I feel that it has such resonance for today. Today. This morning, you know, this last week, our lives. Absolutely. Because every, we are in a, in a, in a tribalistic uh, civilization these days. It feels like so many groups are batting up against one another. And they need lessons like this from a man like that. Well, it also helps people understand that history is cyclic. Yeah. We've been there before. We've had these battles amongst groups. We, we need to fight it through and get beyond it. And, mm -hmm. you know, someday maybe we could break this cycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a young Dodger oh, fan. Oh, good. Hello. Um, what is it like to be an author uh, writing about one of the greatest baseball players of all time? Well, you know, what is your name? Joey. Joey. I have these huge lights, so I barely see your face. Oh, now I see you. Um, Joey. Uh, I love being a children's book author. I think that's what I should start with. You know, I don't know. Well, I've, I've written a couple of adult books, but I really love speaking to children. And I love going into the schools and going and having children ask me questions and us having a discussion. Now, I also have a, my father was a very special person in my life. And he did teach me lots, lots of lessons. And I just think I learned, we had so many family stories that I wanted to share. So I have enjoyed writing family stories. Um, so I either write about my dad, or I've written about my mother, or I've written uh, purely fictional books that have something to do with my son. You know, so it's just sort of fun for me to tell family stories. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Do you like to write? Uh, yeah. And you read as well? Good for you. Keep it up. Here's somebody. Do you Hi. play any sports? Did you hear? Oh. Did you Again, the light, now the light's over here. Um, yeah, you know what, I was an all-around athlete when I was a child all the way through high school. Uh, my favorites were swimming, ice skating, and horseback riding. I was a very good horseback rider, and I had a horse. Um, baseball was never my best sport because I wear glasses. But back then, I didn't like to wear my glasses, so I had a very difficult time seeing that ball coming close to me um, until it got too close. So I would put my glasses on when it got dark, and then I could hit the ball. Uh, do you I, play sports? Yes, I do gymnastics. Oh, fantastic. Did you see the Olympics? Say yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> oh well, we have some oh, great wi young women that did incredible gymnastics that won gold medals, didn't we? I'm on level three team. Oh, yeah? All <laughs> right. Keep it up. Keep it up. Yes. Um, how long did it um, take you to write the book? Great question. How long did it take to write the book? Um, it took, we were on a fast track, as they call it. Um, so usually what happens is you get a contract from your publisher. And I told you I'm a scholastic author. So they usually give you a year to 18 months to write, and then they get a year to produce the book. So it's really a two, two to two and a half year process. Some books take longer, some books are shorter. This one, we wrote it in a year, and it was produced within the two years. So it, take, it takes a full year, though. And you also, I write a first draft and do my edits. I may do a 1,000 edits on my first draft, and then I send it to my editor, and he sends back comments. So then I do another draft and then send it back to him and then we, you get less comments and then you finally agree that we're there. Mm -hmm. Well, we missed that scene about the stoop. See, we should have made that a much longer scene. So uh. <laughs> you always learn and that's what I love about writing is you, know, you get better the more you do it. Yeah. So when you finish one book and you learn some of the mistakes you made in that book, you try not to repeat them in the next time. And that's you know, same thing with, with you in school, I hope. When you get your teacher's comments, learn from them because they really help you become a better writer, and then you can get be better the next time. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Great. Yes, over here. Uh, 
Oh, oh, next oh Ellie, what am I writing my next children's book? <laughs> <laughs> Are you uh, going to write your children's book? I'm going to write, I have already started working on it. Um, I can't, you know, you're not allowed to tell a lot about what it is, especially since I don't have a contract yet with Scholastic, but <laughs> it will have something to do with Cuba and the fact that my mother and I, who, and we're great, my mother and I are great traveling partners. We've been all over the world together, huh? but we had a trip that was just extraordinary. President and uh, the First Lady, President Barack Obama and the First Lady invited my mother and I to go with them to Cuba. Oh my gosh. So I really uh. want to write share that experience and also introduce children to a changing relationship between Cuba and America and a, a very fascinating country. So, so that's, you should hopefully see that in a couple of years. That's great. Okay. Thanks Thank for the you. question. Thank you. Okay, bye. I think we can do one more. Yes, young man. <laughs> Good morning to you Good both. Good morning. Uh, my name's Herb Kells and I grew up in New York City. And as a young man, my father worked in Greenpoint, Brooklyn. So I spent many nights at Ebbets Field. Oh, good. I also saw your, your father play in the 1949 All-Star Game. Oh. And I will never forget that. Wow. Oh. That was his best year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, that's the year he, be, he got the um, Most Valuable Player Award. Go ahead. Huh? Yeah. Well, I want to hear you speak a little bit about what it was like when you went to see your father play? Mm -hmm. Well, you know what? I was so young that I, I was seven when my, my father retired from baseball. Oh, my so my I really God. grew up with him more as, as an activist. Uh. And his baseball career was something I knew about. And, and eventually, I, didn't, I really learned more about it as I started writing about it for children. So I remember going to spring training. That's what my childhood memories are. And that was because Spring training lasts for a month, and we go from Connecticut, where it was cold and snowy, to Florida, where I could swim. Oh, <laughs> so, you know, that's a child, you know, what's important to them? But what I also know is that as a child, um, baseball meant that he'd be away a lot. And so I was very happy when baseball was over and we had dad home at night uh -huh. for dinner. Yes. Um, so, it, so really, but I've, I've loved over the years hearing incredible stories from men, women, um, who were, you know, where that was their Sunday picnic day, or, you know, they would go to Ebbets Field, or people like you, you know, that have these wonderful memories. So that, yeah. that is tr strong, as strong in my head as the visuals that I've seen from the Thank you so much for pictures. the question. Thank you. We, we, we have to let this little boy. I, I, yeah, I'm, one more. We'll go a little this, long. Just last question. One question. Please. Did you know that you were going to be an author? Uh, <laughs> oh, my goodness. Great question. I had no idea. <laughs> I wanted to be a nurse when I was a little girl, ah. and that's all my grandmother said I should ever be in life. And I became a nurse midwife and spent 20 years delivering babies <gasps> and teaching women, mostly women, a couple of men, how to be a midwife. But in that process, I had to write books and help students write their thesis because it was master's level. It's a long story. I mean, you should never ask a storyteller. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I always loved to read. So that's what I remember from, from my connection to books was loving to read. And in my house, we literally had a room we called the library. And that's where our books were kept. Um, so. Books are very comfortable books. I love to write. I love to read. And it just, when I started having to publish as, an, as a fac, uh, because I was on faculty, then I started working for Major League Baseball and doing a program for kids. And I loved writing curriculum for kids. And I just became a, I said this classic, well, I should, I should just write a book for kids. And then once I wrote one book, I wanted to write another one. And every time I go, oh, I'm going to write an adult book. And I go, oh, but I won't be able to see the kids. And so I keep writing books for children. Do you, yeah. Have you read any of them? Have you read any of my books? Well, please get The Hero Two Doors Down. In fact, I'm going to give it to you right now. Oh, Come on up. oh. Better sign it. I will sign this for you as soon as we're over, OK? okay. All right, you're Thank welcome. Thank you for the good question. <laughs> Sharon Robinson, thank you for your, your books.
for your lifetime of service. Thank you. And for bringing the values of your parents oh, thank to you. us and being so consistent with them and sharing them so beautifully. I appreciate it. A pleasure that. to have thank been with you. Thank you so much for being here with us today as well. Thank you all. Thank you. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.